three points I'm hoping to clarify. The first is you refer to the Constitution and the Irish saying um, of living uh, that is not yet unborn. That is yet not born. Of the living not of yet born. Of the living born. not yet born. And you said that's very clear and unambiguous. And to me, that's an oxymoron, a living that is yet not unborn. To me, not those terms are not clear and unambiguous. They're very ambiguous because either living or not living. And no, no. to me, it's saying both. It's living and yet not born. So which is it? Well, it's making the point you're living yeah. and unborn. I mean, the, there's no question. But do you see, I'm, I'm just making a point that it is an oxymoron because you're either living or you can't be both at the same time, right? You do, well, you can't you be can't living and dead and or living, living and not alive, I agree. Yeah. But uh, the point is made, uh, if you like, that um, you have a living human being who is unborn. I don't see there any, to be any contradiction there. An unborn child uh, is living from and growing from fertilization. And when it's born, that living and growing continues. Because the, for me, the definition of born and living are synonymous. That's why I was confused about the living and the unborn. Mm, I, I, being, I, I, I think being very being often born. in sort of popular parlance, we can all be guilty of that, even the very celebration, I suppose, of somebody's birthday, rather than their conception day, is a reflection of that. But, I mean, fundamental to my whole presentation is the fact that objective scientific evidence demonstrates that we are indeed living, albeit unborn, from the moment of fertilisation. Okay. Right. Also, a second point I have very quickly is the, your reference to the Universal Declaration of Independence, Article 25, where the mother and the child have yeah. the same right. Uh, I found that as well confusing, if you could clarify, is that because the very definition of what is a child was, was the argument you were trying to make. What is it? Well, and to refer to the Declaration is kind of a circular to reasoning, since the very definition already assumes yeah. The child. I, I think there's a number of points to be made there. Um, firstly, on, in, in a number of places, universal declarations, United Nations legal instruments of one kind or another, refer to children, and every now and then they refer to unborn children. Uh, just as every now and then they refer to adolescents, much more frequently. Um, and so on. They refer to different stages of life. But the point here is that unborn children are seen as part of the human family, are seen as a, a subgroup of children. So that when the Universal Declaration talks about equal protection, protection for the rights of the mother and protection for the rights of the child, in the body of international law, you have to understand child as including the whole of childhood, so from conception of... Where is the argument for that? Because you're referring to the very thing you're trying to argue for, and that's circulative in a sense. Because you're saying the whole human body sees it as a child, and child includes the unborn. Yeah. But where is the proof that the child includes the unborn? You're again referring to the universal declaration. Well, there's, there's, a, num there's a number of references I refer to the 1966 International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. There's a UN Convention on the Rights of the Child that insists that, um, you'll have the wording off Pat Pat. The Sorry. child, by reason of his physical and mental immaturity, needs special safeguards and care, including appropriate legal protection before as well as after birth. Okay. Before so, as well as after. So this there's the child, child convention it's, it's, on the rights of the child. The child by reason of his physical and mental immaturity. Right. So it's the child before as well as after birth. So it's very clear. So, no. Sorry. So it, it is very clear that what the rights are for the child, right? Yes. And whether it's born or unborn, yes. you're referring the whole discussion is what is the child? What is personhood? Yeah. Where do we start that? And to refer to the very thing, to define it, it 
it's, it's circulative. You have to tell me outside of that what the child is. Well, you, the universal declaration child. doesn't yeah. define adults, it doesn't define children, it doesn't define these terms. Um, it doesn't define the terms and how can you use it though to, to base your argument on it. If it doesn't define the terms, then how can you say, well, how can you refer to that? What you say is, I would agree with what you say, that it is certain because the very thing that you're basing your terms on is not giving a specific definition of what a term is. Well, I, I, what do you refer to on no, the I, 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 I don't think that's a, a, a valid point because uh, the whole of uh, every country in the world makes reference to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the fact that it grants equality to all human beings, the fact that everyone must be regarded as persons before the law and so on. Now, in any authoritative text, if you have uh, a law, uh, an Irish law on some subject or other, they don't define every word in the law at the bottom of the legal text. It is understood and there are occasional explanations here and there, what they call uh, travel paratoire in the documents which describe the reasoning that uh, is arrived at. But you take the founding document of the uh, United States of America, it doesn't list a whole list of definitions at the bottom of the declaration. We're not writing a declaration. We're discussing the very thing. We're trying to identify what it is. The very yeah. argument is. But it's science that identifies what a human being is. This is not for drafters of international human declarations. It's not for the Catholic Church to define what a human being is. That's a matter for science. You know, these are things which we can determine through the appropriate discipline. It's not the appropriate instrument for a universal declaration to define what a human being is. That's not what it's there for. It's there to uphold equal right to life of everyone, equal rights for everyone. Yes? The interesting overall, I have a concern to raise now, and all the points that you covered, um, though they were in themselves substantive for the debate, you have left out the woman in a sense that you have failed to get beyond the treatment of the women involved as mere um, incubators, and I would say that that shows an absence of understanding also, or the basis for absence of understanding of the human rights point, because when you're dealing with a unique situation where there's always going to be a very prevalent clash of the rights of the person who's pregnant, uh, you fail to account for that, and for me then to cite um, maternal mortality rates or the mental health are all decoys until and unless you deal properly with this idea that it is first the mother in her capacity as someone who is there with the pregnancy in immediate proximity to attribute or not to attribute personhood. Now I don't really care to get into the debates on personhood at some point down the line unless you are able to account for the role of the mother and you haven't really been able to do so, I know, by just citing um, issues to do with women's health, either mental or physical, um, you are just saying, okay, so higher or lesser numbers result, in, you know, of death or suicide out of a society where there's abortion or there's not. You're treating this as sort of bodies that, that kind of are there as incubators, with abortion legal, there'll be such okay. a... You've used the word incubators a couple of times. I've used words with slight dignity. I've used... Well, ask, ask hey, hey, you know, I, I just want you to let tell me, please, what words I have used which have in any way indicated that women are to be regarded okay, as the, basically things. Because an incubator... So, well, I'm either answering your point or not. An incubator is a thing. Right? You're saying I have basically, in my presentation, treated women as things. 
Can you tell me precisely what I said? You, you've made a lot of comments one after the other. What words have I actually used where I have treated women as things? I, you see, when, pro, when a, present, a presenter fails to use statistics, uh, one is accused of being emotional. And when one uses statistics, one's accused of blinding everybody with science. You know, one can't win. I think uh, I have used statistics because I owe it to uh, the people of Ireland to show that I have an argument that can be backed up with facts. And it is, to me, a deeply disturbing fact that if you go into the medico-scientific literature, 10 to 20 percent of women, if you go to a, a, an analysis of all the literature, between 10 and 20 percent of women will suffer a moderate to severe psychological or psychiatric uh, problems following abortion. Now, to me, that's not a statistic. If I'm talking about anybody I love, that's a profoundly searing human reality. You may say that my talk has treated women as incubators. I should be very interested in watching the video to see whether I've done it. Gentlemen, go back. While I have multiple efforts to use an evidence-based discourse to afford these views, the reason terms such as incubator are used in this is the specifically power political nature of the paternalist approach to people's personal choice. You and people who share your views have every right to want to have abortions, but the point at which you claim that this is something for other people. Well, I did say at the beginning that I was going to base my remarks on uh, scientific evidence and on reasons. Now, the main thesis that I've made is that the unborn and the mother are human beings, persons with equal rights to be respected. I back that up, yes, with evidence. Um, in a paternalistic way, I don't think so. Before I got in, I was involved in this before I was a father, before I even thought paternal thoughts. Uh, I, I joined it as a uh, social justice issue. So, so I, I'm really saying I don't quite follow. I don't quite follow the rather elaborate language you're using when I've been using terms like uh, 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 the dignity of women, the dignity of the human person, the dignity of every human being. C can we just take any other points that may... I'll take the gentleman there, you, you've already had a point, I'll come back to you. Yeah, basically, uh, actually, with all the statistics that you mentioned, you, well, basically, you presented uh, uh, these um, statistics that were presented in Britain and the US about uh, how... Uh, after the legalization of abortion, how uh, abortion or how deaths due to illegal abortion have come down, and then you went to an awful lot of data to back up that that's actually not true. That uh, if there was a reduce of uh, death due in child during childbirth was because of medical advancement. I think that's that's the bottom line, and you presented a lot of data. Uh, In my, in, honestly, I would really need to go into the details myself, you know, to, to, to verify. But you also mentioned another statistic uh, there, I think, uh, in the introduction about Sweden. And you mentioned that there was a correlation between abortion and domestic violence. And I'm just about a bit concerned that that could be uh, kind of a little bit of, of the same, that uh, kind of like a, a statistic. I think you're making a very valid point. What, what I said about all of this matter is that I, I, I really do uh, commend you for saying that you're going to look it up for yourself. And I, 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 I would say that to everyone. Don't believe a word of what I'm saying. 
check on the maps, check the sources. I can give you the precise uh, reference for the Swedish study that I mentioned, and you can Google for it and, and find the study. And the, uh, I think the relatively significant fact there is that abortion is widely accepted in Sweden as a settled, settled matter in law, albeit there is a very strong youth movement opposing abortion. Um, but, you know, the, this, this is just hard data, but for me statistics um, are a very important part of the, the story. We do need to look at it. Uh, if we're talking about an issue, I mean, what am I to do? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, no, no. What, what, what I'm saying is that you didn't go to the same level of detail about analyzing the Swedish data. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, well, uh, I, I've, got the, I've got the information. Yeah. I can let you have it in the article. Yes? saying is on the one hand um, you find it difficult to hear a man give witness on this issue uh, and understand what you're saying there and on the other hand you're saying that you feel for women who have no choice effectively and um, which was of course the point I was making and of course my fundamental point is that the only reasonable way of developing a humane society is to protect the fundamental human rights of everybody. I'm not going to dodge the issue of rape because clearly it is something that does uh, occur to everyone, especially in a society where it seems to be becoming more of a problem rather than less of a, a problem. And uh, I think that uh, if my daughter was raped, or that the rape itself is arguably the worst thing that could possibly happen in a family life and a woman's life. I think it's very unfeeling of the pro-abortion lobby to exploit the rape issue. Because fundamentally, abortion does not unrape the mother. She still has the consequence of the, both the abortion to deal with as well as the rape. Whereas, of course, the rapist himself may or may not, may or may not get off scot-free, but all too often, perhaps they do. So, the very first thing I would say is, please, let's not insult our own intelligence or the intelligence of women, or the intelligence of women who've gone ahead with their babies after they've been raped, to suggest that abortion for rape is the solution. It's a very, very difficult situation, a very challenging situation. Of course, for all the reasons I have explained, and as the Chief Executive of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, I can't argue that none of these reasons apply in the case of rape. Of course they do. For the very same reasons. And the fundamental reason is the fact that you have a new human life developing. 
What a woman needs in those circumstances is every possible support. I think it's rather significant, and my Irish colleagues here will correct me if I'm wrong, but the famous ex involved something of this order. Um, and um, I hope I'm getting the right letter right here. But the, 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 the person who was raped in those circumstances, was she consulted about the abortion that she subsequently had? Uh, well, uh, she was uh, underage and uh, she was uh, 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 brought to uh, the UK and was a victim. Yes. yes. But she was underage. Is there any evidence about the way she feels about the abortion? Well, I, I think maybe what you're referring to is perhaps the C case. It's the C case. Yes, there was, um, there was the, the C case in particular. Uh, the, the girl in, in that particular case uh, believed that when she was, uh, that she was brought over to the UK, she believed she would have a baby. And she was looking for her baby afterwards. Uh, it, it, it was completely it complete news to her that, she was, uh, that, that it was an abortion that was being carried out and the baby wouldn't survive. So it was, it, was actually a, it was actually a terrible situation really. And uh, she actually uh, uh, admitted that completely to Pat Kenny on a radio show. And um, uh, she also told him that she had uh, suffered a mental breakdown as a result. So it was, um, it was a very traumatic case for her. There's a lady at the back. Yes. Yeah, um, I just wondered about babies who are incompatible with life. Um, and what we force on those women, like these are women who have planned to have these babies. It's not a means of contraception to have an abortion. They want their baby. But unfortunately, there is no chance of the baby surviving after birth. But yet, now we force upon them to carry their baby the whole way through to delivery. We force them to grow for everyone to see them get bigger, for everyone to ask them about their child and say how excited it must be, and for them to repeatedly know that their baby can't survive. And their only option is to get a plane where they're unsupported, they don't have their family behind them, they don't have health professionals that they know, and go to England or go somewhere else where it's legal to have them work, to come back on their own without any support. I'm, I'm very grateful to you for the question. I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to refer to a video that I know is going to be published very soon. And I hope that if you're willing for me to send you a link to that video, will accept that. Um, the subject of the video is the daughter of Pat. I'm going to ask Pat to say a few words. Yes, uh, my daughter uh, became pregnant with one of her babies and uh, it suffered from a condition called, called anencephaly, okay? in which case the brain doesn't go properly. And uh, needless to say, when that was discovered, she was being offered an abortion, but she said, no, no, this is my baby, and as far as I'm concerned, and this baby is a member of And she, uh, she went through all the phases. She knew that the baby would die, but what she wanted to do was to allow the baby to live as long as it was possible to live. She did not want to take that baby's life. Because then there would be an additional factor, you know, that she had killed her baby. She did not want to kill her baby. So uh, the, the baby was ultimately born and uh, with enough time for the baby in, in, in her case. And she wanted to make sure that it was baptized, isn't it? And, uh, you know, eventually the baby died shortly after. But the thing is that there is now, there is, there was, I mean, she, uh, she was lived long enough for her footprints, for her to just enjoy holding the baby for a while. You know, and all the wonderful things that go on with, with the birth. Of course, there was tragedy in that. And of course, but there's also now a little way that we as a family can visit. You know, so the thing is that we hear this about, oh, let's, you know, we have to uh, uh, get, a, uh, you know, get a terminated meet. That's, 
That's not true. That's 